We've been married 52 years, and we have uh, four daughters, and we have uh, 11 grandchildren and two great-grandchildren. And they all look like me. I want to say the best thing that Bob did for me was to say, I want this to be an open process. And as soon as he got the diagnosis, we slowly began not making a big issue of it, but telling our friends, telling our Sunday school class, telling the groups that we were in. We have participated very willingly in clinical research because first of all, Bob's mother had Alzheimer's. Um, and that was very painful to watch her decline. Um, his mother's sister had Alzheimer's and now he has it. And while we've never been told there's a genetic component, uh, I think there, that's obvious that there is something related there. As president of the college, as dean of a graduate school, a school teacher, he was always in control. And to find that you're not in control of things as you used to be, it's got to be terribly hard. I don't apologize for memory lapses but I just go on and do the best that I can. I think the biggest challenge um, is maintaining patience because there's an awful lot of repetition and uh, it's easy to get irritable and uh, you have to pull away sometimes and regain and regroup so you can be patient. I have to give uh, a lot of credit to Julia because she has made life very meaningful for me and kept me going and when I might even have given up. Now is the time that's so critically important for us to uh, fund as fully as possible research because the, we don't know enough about the disease. There are no drugs that, that are available for stopping. There are drugs that will slow the process and slow the symptoms, but not the disease. So our story was one of a short-term um, situation where mom was, um, we noticed that something wasn't right with her. She was distant um, and then uh, later on it got worse where we saw that she had actual dementia. Um, where she was hallucinating and so we thought she needed to be with us. She was literally seeing things that no one else could see. I tried to leave her alone in the house a couple times and they were very, very harrowing experiences for her. She was afraid, um, paranoid that something was going to happen to her, that one of these visions that she was seeing was actually out to get her. And you're sitting here watching this person in almost disbelief. I got a phone call from the local police and uh, it was about two in the morning and they said, um, do you know uh, Matilda Taylor? And I said, yes, I know Matilda Taylor. She's my mother. She says, well, we have her. I said, what do you mean you have her? She's here in the house. It was three miles she had walked in the middle of the night and um, they, they brought her home to me and um, the policeman tried to explain to me before they brought her in what her condition was and she was just a mess. She was convinced that I, her son, who she gave her whole life to raising, was going to kill her that night in that house. She was visiting with my brother and mom had a bad night and my my sister-in-law saw what was going on and um, she tried to secure mom in the house and knowing that she would walk away. Well, mom decided that at all costs she had to get out of the house and um, actually uh, climbed out of the second floor window and fell to her death. I don't know how much more tragic it could possibly get. And I know people are working really hard to try to figure this puzzle out, but we've got to put a lot more into it so that we can find answers because there are going to be a lot more Tilly Taylors out there. We have to live in the moment with them or they will 
separate from us and we will lose them altogether. Eight years um, into the disease was when all the light went out. She just really, she enjoyed life, she loved life, she loved her family and she loved her friends. You don't know that they're gonna become violent and agitated and not be able to be in social situations that um, have been comfortable to them for their whole lives. Once in a blue moon, you would have a moment of greatness. Like, um, she would see one of the grandchildren and call them by name, which we were like, wow. Um, but for the most part, this woman who lit up a room turned into an empty shell laying in a bed. Uh, it was my younger brother who said, that disease sucked every bit of life out of her. And as a nurse, I have never seen anything like it. And I have 32 years of nursing experience. This disease just ravages um, a family. And, and um, it starts with the person who has the disease and it permeates through all of the relationships that individual has. The last two weeks of her life, she was surrounded by all of her children and all of her grandchildren. It Kept was the first time in all my years of nursing that I ever felt helpless and hopeless. This is a disease that is going to affect more and more people and the level of incidence is going to be younger and younger and we have to really focus on how we can help the, the individuals who have the disease, the families that are caring for the loved ones. Our mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's when she was 58 years old, and 11 years later, just after her 70th birthday, she lost her battle with the disease. It puts a lot of strain on relationships. However, um, it also is very bonding because I found that my husband and I had a really good relationship and it made us stronger. When my mother started sliding, he would make me laugh when it seemed really dire. So, because you have to have a sense of humor in this. She was sauntering in the neighborhood and um, someone from the porch said, oh, good morning, ma'am, and said, where are you going? And she said, to Brooklyn. And since she was in New Orleans, um, he knew that he, she wasn't gonna make it pushing her walker all the way to Brooklyn. I needed to stay in the moment with my mother and not, uh, not think about where she was and how she was before or where she was going or how it was going to be. If my mother taught me anything, it was to, to be present in, in the present moment and to, accept, and to be accepting, to accept her the way she was. I was in denial about this disease. What it does is alter your entire life. It changes the family's life, it changes the person's life. It, it's, the magnitude of it is indescribable. There's a stigma associated with the disease right now, and what we have to do is remove that stigma. We have to come out of the closet so that we can acknowledge that this disease exists to the extent that I believe it does. What I think is vital is learning what the signs are and also knowing that that 50% of the population over age 85 gets some sort of dementia. That means we're all at risk. Now is the moment that we need to fund research to find a cure for this disease. Right now is the time to do it.